Softran uh, does uh, broadcast solutions on the Mac uh, since more than 30 years. So what's broadcast solution? Well, we did a lot of things. I'll cover a little bit of history and really like going in the past to show you where we come from and where we are getting today because what we're introducing at this IBC is a new version of Move Recorder, which is our flagship recording application, uh, Move Recorder 4, with a lot of new features, new user interface. Uh, but just to go until now, until we are today, we are coming from somewhere, and I'll explain you a little bit the background, but very quick. I won't go over too many things, but just to show you the first software we did in 1994, it was for radio playout application. You see that the user interface, uh, it's not like that that we would do it today, but it was a good application for radio playout, cart automation, and things like that. So that's one of the first software. Well, in fact, we did more before uh, because we are there since 35 years, as I said, but that was the first uh, media uh, software application that we built on the Mac. And Another installation that we did uh, at the early uh, at the, in 2000, it was a TV automation, and as you see, still good old VTRs that we were controlling. So we built a software for automation to control those VTRs, play also some still image and so on from and some videos from the MAV70. I think it's down there. Uh, it was a Sony device, and so that's one of the installation that we did. And then we came with. Uh, playout application, which was simple to use and so on. That was in 2002. Uh, I will go now and show you uh, the first version of Move Recorder. So that's, that was uh, Move Recorder 1. Uh, it was a uh, software that was done. Uh, it was running uh, at the time on Xserve, and it was SD. So we were happy to do one SD signal on the Mac. And we had, but we had nice installations still with that. Uh, for example, this installation was done in Sport 5 Paris in 2007, so it's a while ago. See those Xserve, Xserve Reds? And we were recording, there were many channels. I think it was uh, about 10 or 12 channels. Don't remember exactly. And, but every time we had to have, for SD, one Xserve per channel. So you see the kind of installation that it, it was doing. But it, was, it has worked really, really well. Then we came a little bit later with Move Recorder 2. You see the interface goes a little bit better. We did proxy recording and so on. With some other installations, such as this one in, um, that was in Mexico, and did also still with Xserves and so on in 2009. Uh, just the storage was different. It was, I think it was, uh, yeah, active storage, I think. And then 2014, we came with Move Recorder 3. You see that. Over the time, when we started with Move Recorder 1, we were happy, as I said, to do one channel of SD, so the interface was really thoughtful, so it's just one channel. With Move Recorder 3, we had more powerful computers, and people wanted to do multiple channels. So we did a user interface that was thought already for multi-channel that you could control all from one user interface, uh, Move Recorder 3, so that was three years ago. Another. A setup that we did uh, with um, IdeaCast technology in Malaysia. Uh, it was a setup where they were recording uh, multiple channels, and all the, the newsroom was editing because the, the good thing is that you can edit while recording. So we were recording on, on shared storage, and the editors were editing on the fly. So Move Recorder is 10 years old, as you see, the first version. So, yeah. <laughs> so we hesitated. You know, there were some products that were called. 10, so maybe come with more recorder 10, but no, we, we changed our mind. <laughs> we just keep simple and we recall it for, that's the next version we have. And, but also 10th anniversary, so we are very happy with presenting it. It has been a lot of work to, uh, to come with a very clean user interface, uh, much cleaner, uh, trying to think, to bring workflow. What we try to do is that the user interface is really important for us that uh, anyone can come use it in no time, and being very quick, because we know that's what our customers want. And you'll see in some of the features that we've uh, done that that's what we do. So that's Move Recorder 4. And the list, a quick list of important features that we brought, and, but I'll show, I'll do a quick demo to show you what we did. So it's a fully configurable user interface. We support NDI sources, so NDI, it's a video over IP protocol. So instead of connecting SDI and so on, you go over IP. Um, that's 
that's pretty uh, big right now. You've heard probably about video over IP uh, workflows and how to do that. There are many things to come. NDI is just one of them. There are all the SMPT 2022 and so on that uh, we can be compatible on. But then it's using video cards as we do. Because Move Recorder, it's a software running on a Mac using any uh, video card on the market, such as AJ, Blackmagic, and so on. But really, NDI brings a lot of flexibility. Instead of having to connect a device uh, to your Mac and then an SDI cable and to a router and so on, you can just come with a simple Ethernet cable, a gigabit, and then you have your signal going everywhere. The setup we are doing on our booth at IBC, uh, it's 7G12, the booth, by the way. Uh, you can come and see that. It's a simple, we have three computers, just a simple Ethernet cable connected from one to the other, and we can see the, the sources and record them from uh, all the computer sets. It's very flexible. Of course, it gets over IP, so you need to know a little bit more. It's not like a SDI cable. SDI cable are good because it's simple. It's a uh, signal that you pull, and it works usually, and if your cable is correct. With network, you just need to know a little bit what you do. Uh, it's quite easy, but you cannot do everything. You can uh, do an NDI distribution over a regular uh, network with all your IP uh, going on at the same part time because you'll use a lot of bandwidth of your network for, with the video. So it's dedicated network. So it's things to do, but really simple to, uh, to use. The other thing is external audio that we have added. And that allows you to uh, have uh, another source of audio, because previously we were using only SDI embedded audio in the SDI. Now you can use any audio available on your Mac. So it's really flexible for Dante, for example. You can have Dante input. Uh, so for now, if you have an output from your mixer, you can get in any audio input on the Mac, and we can use that as an audio source. Effect and overlay, it's just that we added the ability to crop uh, resize, rotate, the interlace, and also to add overlays, to add a text, time code, and a still image if you want to, uh, to do uh, overlays. HEVC support, so just one thing there with the HEVC, it's working only uh, in Mac OS 10.13, so a high Sierra that will be released pretty soon, uh, because that's something that we use, the, uh, we try to use standard thing from Apple, and they come up with uh, 1013 with a way to encode in HEVC using the hardware acceleration of Mac that were released from 2016. These Mac have a hardware acceleration in HEVC, and then you can encode in real time HEVC, because otherwise, if you don't using the hardware acceleration, HEVC, you won't do that on a Mac, even at the highest end, because it requires a lot of CPU. The other thing is save and restore configuration. I'll, I'll show that in the Nemo. It will be a tool ring mobile. And we, have also, we are also coming with an Express version. So we are changing a little bit the way we are the, the different products in Move Recorder. Uh, previously, Move Recorder 3, there was Move Recorder 3 with Pro Codex option. We are getting rid of the Pro Codex option and offer Move Recorder 4 that has all the, uh, the options. But we want it to come also with a lighter version. So we're coming with Move Recorder Express that is more affordable, uh, but doesn't have some of the pro uh, features that maybe some wa someone wants. And I'm thinking about metadata, for example. It's not supported in the Express version. Uh, the codecs, uh, there are different codecs like XDCAM, XAVC, and so on, which are not used in some cases. So in the Express version, you can encode in ProRes and H.264 only. And there's no VTR control, but all the other things you can still record in NDI, uh, multiple channels, and so on. So it's really, it's really good. On the website, if you want to go and have a look, we have a list of the different, different features of each version. But really, the idea was to bring something even more affordable than uh, what Move Recorder 3 was. OK, so a quick overview of Move Recorder. I started just one channel. Pretty clean, no? <laughs> it's difficult to do, to do cleaner than that, I think. So uh, you have your input. And if I go there, I can just start recording uh, with the overlays. But that's just one channel. And of course, I'll show a little bit more, because there, there's more to that. Uh, the good thing, we, I was talking about the configurable user interface, is that now you can uh, select the, the number of viewers that you will have. So let's go with eight. And then for each, 
for that, you will have the ability to select the layout that you want. So depending on what you, uh, what's important, you can choose to have that layout over there or the other one. So it's pretty easy. You can just click on it and I'll zoom out. And you see I've got the different layouts coming. We have done some ourselves, but it's configurable also. Users can change if they want to do some weird layout. And it's totally customizable. So that's quite nice. Um, and also, you can select whether you want to have the overlays. For example, I disabled to, to make it, as I said, a little cleaner. Uh, you can disable all the overlays or show them all the time if you want to have your time code displays and so on. So that's for the configurable user interface. A few things that we've added quite important in some workflows is you see here, for those who know, maybe I'll explain a little bit for those who doesn't know, but the ID with more recorders that you have on the left-hand side here, the important part is the sources. So these are the available sources. I've got the local sources, so that are the source on the Mac. So if you have a Blackmagic AJ device connected. And NDI sources, I just explained what was NDI. And remote control is uh, if you have another uh, computer with more record installed running, you can control it remotely. So we have, and if you have a look over here, uh, we have customers that have up to 49, I think that's the max, but it could be more. It just depends what can fit in one window, the size of your screen, that's really quite the limit. But we have, it's possible to control many channels from one computer. So you have the sources there and then the destinations. These destinations are, you can create as many destinations as you want as the previous version. And just set the settings up with where you want to record to and also uh, select the codec that you want to that you want to use, okay? But the thing is, uh, before, if you wanted on all your channels, if you wanted to change, for example, now we are using the QuickTime one, the QuickTime destination, and if you wanted to change to MXF, you had to disable it, and like that, and then go to the other. So it's okay, it's quite easy, but it can be tedious, and you need to make sure that you've done it all. So what we've done to make it easier is we can now from there, enable on all sources, disable on all sources, or solo on all sources. So it's small things. As I said, we try to do things easier, but it's really making life easier for some of our users. And then I was talking in the, in the version before uh, about the uh, save and restore configuration. So the idea here is that we know that customers, uh, we have some, for example, it's pretty big if you have a, a truck, they have a truck and they do every Monday, they do one sport, like football, and every Thursday they will do boxing. And it will be every Thursday and Monday the same thing, but two different configurations with cameras that have different names, with recording to different uh, folders, with uh, using different codecs or whatever. So previously, again, they had to change everything, change the destination, the way the camera was named. So it could take time and uh, prone to possible errors. So we uh, have done a, the ability to save a configuration and then restore it. So here you can store any, any configuration and you'll see here, you got a menu that tells you what you want to restore. So you'll restore only the sources, the destinations, uh, the audio video presets, so you can really select what you want to, uh, to restore and you can come back with the same setup as you had before. I think it, uh, it's coming with uh, very nice features, all the features that I listed. Uh, we can send a beta version if uh, that are available uh, for, for testing. So people that are interested should send us an email and contact us at uh, sales at softron.tv and then we can uh, put you on the beta uh, program. Uh, it's super, it's, uh, it will be released uh, in beginning of October. And uh, so it's, it's pretty finished, but it's important that we still have some beta testers. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the effects and overlay just very quickly here. If you go in the AV presets, you see here, you just set how you want to crop the video, the interlace, rotate. And the good thing with the cropping and resolution is that of course, it's important if you're cropping, and especially for some codecs like XDCAM, it can only be HD, it has to be the resolution. So if you crop it, you will lose the resolution. So you can just crop and then uh, resize it afterwards to uh, match to uh, 
1920, so you just select it and said, okay, that's my HD output. And then text overlay, you say we want it overlay it on top at the bottom, and small size and so on, and time code. You can overlay time code, the source name. Let's do a quick one and ProRes and crop it like that. Up. Here we go, and add maybe an image overlay. But that's, so that's very easy to, uh, to do. Uh, we tried, for example, in the text overlay again, uh, to make something simple. We could add a lot of choices and things like that, but we try to limit the number of things so it keeps on being usable and easy to use. Uh, we try to fit you know, most uses, uh, and also we try to listen to customers. So if you are testing and you would see, oh, that kind of information overlay would be important for me, we try to listen, and uh, for those who know us, we try to listen and bring some little additions also to the software if it makes sense and so on. So that's for the... Uh, Ole. And for the uh, audio, also, basically, you see it here, and you can s change the source of audio over there. So that's Formal Recorder. So again, a software to do edit while ingest on the Mac. You can start recording, import your files in Final Cut Pro 10, and start editing uh, on the fly. And just the last thing that I wanted to show is this. That's... Um, a setup that has been done at VGTV in Norway. Uh, it's two weeks ago, I think. And just to show, they were uh, using uh, Fankert Pro 10 to do a workflow, a broadcast workflow for the election. And also, uh, you can see over there, that's our player application they were using, as well as our CG that they were using to do those kind of, those kind of graphics. Uh, so it's all, all automated that took data and sent that to our CG. So with our Playout application, you can really have uh, complex broadcast workflows. We try to really answer a lot of different needs, and this is a good, uh, this is really showing what you can do also on the Playout side, because we don't have only more recorder to, to record. And I think uh, Christian will come uh, later today to explain some workflows in FineCut Pro 10. He will not uh, show the, uh, the Playout application, but how he's using Final Cut Pro 10, his workflow. So I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, we are very happy to be showing that new uh, Move Recorder 4 and to see all the movement in a pro application. We really think that the Mac uh, is the best platform for broadcast operation, and we've seen that, you've seen since many years, things have, have evolved. It's not the same thing as it used to be, but it continues to be really we are really happy with what we can do, so I hope you, you will be by testing the application, so don't hesitate again to contact us, and thank you.